Hello, this is Dr. Mutu Petunde Bias, gynecologist working in the North York area. I'm also the co-founder of Women's Health Education Made Simple. Welcome to our series on dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea can be divided into primary or secondary, and it means painful menstruation or painful periods. Primary dysmenorrhea is the presence of recurrent crampy lower abdominal pains that occurs during the menses and which no other cause of pain can be found. Typically occurs in young women within four to five years of the first menstruation. The pain has significant impact. It impacts quality of life, activities of daily living, absenteeism from school, from work, and being able to enjoy common things of life during the period of your menstruation. So let's focus on primary dysmenorrhea and what causes this. It seems to be related to the release of prostaglandins which causes uterine contractions when you have your periods. It's almost similar to labor pains. You may also experience associated symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, headaches, and sometimes fatigue. Typically, like I said, it starts during the adolescence and it tends to improve after childbirth. Diagnosis. This is made after the physical examination by doing a vaginal ultrasound, preferably. If not, an abdominal ultrasound may be required. Sometimes an MRI or CT may need to be performed. Rarely do we have to do a laparoscopy as a first line investigation, and this may be reserved if there has been treatment failure. How do we treat primary dysmenorrhea? It's important to understand the severity of the pain and its effect on daily activities. Generally, reassurance and education is important knowing fully well that there is nothing pathological. The treatment could be pharmacological, which means medications, and it's divided into first line. And the first line is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like naproxen, ibuprofen, methanamic acid. It's important to use this during the duration of your period, and sometimes you may start one to two days prior to your menstruation. The second line is the hormonal treatment and these are things like the contraceptive pills or patches. They suppress ovulation and provide contraception as well. Sometimes these two first lines do not work and we need to consider a third line. A third line could be injections, implants, Hormone releasing intrauterine devices. It's also important to understand that there are non pharmacological treatments like heat, using hot water bottle, heating, heating pad, diet, vitamin supplement, herbal remedy, exercises, and alternative medicines like yoga and acupuncture. Despite all this, treatment, we sometimes get into failure of treatment. It's important for your gynecologist to understand whether you are using the medication in the correct manner and also
also perhaps have a combination of the medication. After this, we would also need to exclude other secondary causes of dysmenorrhea. And this will take me to my next topic, which is secondary dysmenorrhea. And hope to see you soon.